everyone welcome to watch it paint in this video we're going to be painting another little fella from deep madness by dimension games this is currently on kickstarter it's their second printing if anyone would like to check that out i'll leave a link in the description below so you can go and have a look at this game this is going to be for another hero it's arthur wayland i don't own this game these are very very kindly donated to the channel from our patreon subscriber james so thank you very much for that and in this particular video, Phil, who's got request rights on Patreon, it's all Patreon today, he's requested that we did Arthur, the engineer from, from this game. So here we are making a tutorial for it. Now, I started off with, this is a resin model. James won these models, so they're, they're all resin. It's pretty cool. Um, so they're very, very detailed. And I didn't want to use a rattle can primer, a spray primer. I didn't want to even chance obscuring some of this tiny, tiny, delicate detail. So not that. I really need that excuse. I use these paints on primers a lot. This is Vallejo's Game Color range, and I've started off with a blend. So I've mixed 33% black, 33% turquoise, and 33% dark green. I've got this sort of bluey, slightly green overall look, and I'm applying that with a really, really cheap brush because I just don't want to ruin my brush on a base coat. There's no reason whatsoever to, uh, to risk a nice brush. So that was a 10 cents brush from quick draw supplies links are always in the description below links to all the paint well yeah links to the paints that i use as well as all the names are just listed below if that's any use do check them out so with that that is the the bulk of the base layer done that sort of overall that's the biggest chunk it's the only bit i could really use a large brush for and i use that cheap brush just to save wear and tear on my more expensive brushes so from this point on i'm going to be using my smaller more accurate, more expensive brushes. And we're carrying on with that game color range. This is khaki. And I'm going to use the game color range to use as both the base coat and the primer as I often, often do um, on all the gray areas. Once the base coat is done, if the color's what I want anyway, I'll carry on using Vallejo, but then I might use some of Army Painters as well. We'll see as, as we get on. So here I'm going to use Pale Flesh by Vallejo. Again, this is for the primer properties. I actually don't like the Pale Flesh color. I very rarely use that. Might use it for something like a vampire. Um, certainly don't want it for this engineer, but I'm just giving him purely a prime coat here. Just a very, very watered down, very careful, accurate, light coating. So I'm going to go over the top of that once it's dried and set on as the primer because the, the army paint ones won't stick to this as well. Once that's in place, Tinny Tins out by Vallejo. Uh, very, very similar to Rough Iron if you've got that in Army Painter. And if you've got the plastic version of these models, you have very likely spray painted them already got them nice and primed so you could use rough iron or tinny tin or something i'm just going for that dark dark metallic look um which i think in the artwork it kind of looked like his boots were fairly fairly dark so again game color range so this is working as a primer so i'm using vallejo's range here and uh, sticking with that concept it's hammered copper for his knee pads just they looked a bit sort of goldy knee pads so i went with some hammered copper as the as the base coat of that quite a dark one and i'm also painting those straps in later on i'm going to change those straps to a necromancer cloak sort of color of dark gray um, but this is a allowing me to prime them and b i thought they might be metal you can't tell in the picture you it really doesn't show you but then i was just thinking about it like how would you have metal straps how would you bend your knees that sort of thing so it just didn't make sense so claymore blade it's going to be the silver that i planned to the briefcase and this isn't game color range, but it is a resin model, so the paint will kind of stick. It Well, it, do, it does stick. I just don't trust it. It feels fine. It looks fine. None of it came off during painting, and I, I'll varnish it, and it'll probably be fine, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd either use the game color range to prime it first, or, or you know, if you're just going to spray prime it, you're going to be sorted after that. But that's the one bit that I've just gone direct to with with army painters color uh the one bit followed by this next one bit the necromancer cloak is another color that does stick quite well to resin i've got no problems with it i just don't trust it so don't no don't don't i'm not leading by example here <laughs> i'm explaining what i'm doing and why i'm doing it and because it's allowing me to get a better finish on my model but if you're playing these on the table and you really really want to make sure the paint doesn't come off i do recommend you prime but I do want to note that resin models do take paint a lot easier. And most of the time, I am painting with a, with paints that are primers as well. Beastie Brown by Vallejo. Now, I quite like the Leather Brown by Army Painter. But because this is his head, it's going to get a lot more touching, a lot more you know issues with paint coming off. So, you know, it's close enough Beastie Brown and the Leather Brown that I would have used. That I may as well use Vallejo's one just to have the safety net. Of, of it being a primer and a base coating one. Um, but 
I don't have anything by Vallejo like Necromancer Cloak. I hate the Vallejo two silvers that I have. They just don't, even though they're game colors, they don't take very well. So I'd rather use, I'd rather risk it with army paintings, which aren't designed as a primer, but you know, it it's, it's from my experience. And that's another thing to take on with all these tutorials. It's hard to tell you guys stuff and I might not cover things. And this stuff just comes with experience. You just learn each particular paint just because i use army painters paints some of their paints are absolutely amazing and others are quite a lot weaker um and that's why i don't think you can you have to learn that and you can't always stick to one particular brand because one color in one brand will be better than another color in another brand if that makes sense hopefully let me know in the comments if that makes sense if if you've started to appreciate that and, and note that a red in one brand is better than a red in another so use that brand but the the black in the other brands better. You know, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I did some shade in the background. I'm choosing very close color shades to the base coats because I'm going for very subtle shades. I'm applying it very, very carefully and and it's watered down. I don't always water down my shades, but these are about 25% water. I'm just trying to adjust it very, very subtly and just because it's so small and so detailed, I can't quite apply the shade exactly pinpoint where I want it to go because it's just the tiny. So I'm sort of applying it all over it, but thinly and carefully, maybe two coats in some places. I'm going to use the light tone. All of these washers are army painters washers, and I'm going to use light tone on the car kit. It's going to darken it down just a little bit, just a smidge. Again, 25% water roughly. So these are light coats. Build it up as I need. Make sure none of that pulls anywhere and just apply it and darken it down. And then we'll go around later and highlight back up those colors. And it's just going to leave those recesses just slightly darker. And you're going to finish with a very realistic, very subtle shading. This isn't, this is that, I, I tend to swap between my sort of two styles of harsh shadows and highlights, which really pop out on the table. This is going to pop out less on the table, but hopefully by the end looks sort of fantastic in, in your hand. It's going to be almost a competition, almost a showpiece, which isn't how we always want to paint, but you can, you can sort of get the technique and the gist of it as you follow along. You can steal the colors. Uh, you might not want to paint as carefully and precise as this. You might just use one wash all over a dark wash, a black wash, a brown wash would, would have you covered. It just won't be as subtle as this. And you can see I'm, I'm switching through like every wash I've got, I think, by the Army Painter here. What am I? I use flesh wash, light tone, blue tone, black wash, at least four. Did anybody spot any others? I, I was losing track there while I was talking. Um, but yeah. And unlike normal, this wash is actually taking quite a long time because I'm being that careful. I'm just going around and, and double checking, making sure there's no pools anywhere. I want it very clean. I'm just going to show you how it looks now at the end. And to some extent, I think you could just finish here. Like you've you've got some some nice popping out details thanks to those, those washers. And, you know, I think that's pretty good. That didn't take very long. That's probably half an hour. 40 minutes sort of work at that point and that's not bad for what i would consider a sort of competition stand up for me anyway and and before you judge me too harshly do remember there's a camera in front of me this this camera is right in front of my face so it's extra hard i'm going to use a splash of gory red the detail on this model is crazy i, I love that i didn't notice this at the start but he's actually got a pair of pliers and a screwdriver in his little toolkit so i painted the screwdriver the handle red just to add a, a little bit of uh pizzazz to, to the model a little splash of color i'm going to look at uh, this is in real time I'm not even speeding this up this is how little dry brushing i do for his hair and very very carefully very very lightly just catching a bit of highlight on his hair it's just going to make that look a little bit more realistic as i, as I just mentioned while i was applying the washers i am going for a really really subtle finish on this model there's going to be it's not going to, I don't think it's going to pop too much at a table distance, but when you pick it up, hopefully it's going to look nice. It's just, it's just, I don't have the game, so I'm not painting this to play. I'm painting this just to look nice. It's sort of a piece, piece that I own, if that makes sense. Um, I think we probably all do this from time to time. So hopefully it's nice to mix up my techniques. Let me know below if you'd just like me to stick to like always painting as fast and as poppy, I guess is the word. Or you want the models to pop out on the table if you'd prefer that, or if it's nice to occasionally take my time go through some levels of highlights you know get get it a more subtle subtle look really so kark is back out insane detail brush i do so much of this highlight with the insane detail brush it's really just a tiny bit of paint at a time and i'm just going to edge highlight round his waistcoat and then paint in some of the colors he's got sort of um what, what would you call it like he's got a recess that's just running around the edge so i'm leaving nice shaded areas in there 
It's got a few folds and I'm highlighting them up too. For his overalls, I'm going to be using turquoise just mixed with black now. So I've removed that green. I'm removing the greeny look for the highlight. And, it, and it, well, it's not going to have wash on either. So it's going to look brighter and it's going to be slightly more bluey this time. Less, less bluey green, more blue. And I'm just going to go and it's basically edge highlighting. He's got sort of patches on his jeans. I've gone around that with his overalls. He's got pockets. I'm highlighting all the edges of his pockets. And he's got some folds and creases on his trousers on the back. And then up his sleeves, he's got loads of folds and his um, cuffs are turned up. So highlighting up all the edges of them. I've just highlighted the tip, the along the edge of every fold basically then for the necromancer cloak from before which was sort of his backpacks his bags his gloves and his belts around his waist i'm just using necromancer cloak and filthy suit mixed 50 50 so about half and half you judge this by eye guys I, all the all the measurements i give you are just in, rough indications you know you make it how you want it to look but that's roughly the colors that i've used and you tweak it as you need it depends how much wash you use what color wash you use that sort of thing so bear that in mind by all means drop me a message if you're not sure and you'd like some help I'll, i'm always around to help with that for his knee pads i'm going to use bright bronze on top of that hammered copper so i i, I did set off to i thought i was going to use gold but then how the model was coming up. So you can always adjust as well. Don't forget that if something looks a little bit off, you can change color. Same as if your wash is settled slightly differently or your blues mixed differently, adjust the colors to make it pop out a little bit more, if that makes sense. So my guys turned out quite dark, quite, um, what's the word? I, I think I mean sort of like low contrast. There's no big jumps in the colors. So I'm keeping that a bit more subtle. If it was bright gold, I think it would stand out and look weird on this model, hopefully. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know stuff in the comments. If I'm ever wrong or you've got any tips or ideas for me, always let me know in the comments. I'm learning as much as you guys. I love when you guys help me out and give me suggestions. I try and bear that in mind for future videos, things like that. Play more blades back out. Just going to edge highlight that briefcase and highlight back in that center panel. Just trying to use leave that black wash in all those recessed lines around it. I'm going to also use dry brush again, and I'm just going to very, very subtly try and highlight up his his metallic boots that I've painted with that tinny tin, just trying to catch a few of the edges and give a bit of shine to it. So they look a little bit more metallic, but I'm still trying to keep them super dark. So I'm not, this is a very, very light dry brush, just trying to get all the raised bits and it's gonna just make them look a little bit more metallic. Now for the base, I'm not gonna show you that again, guys. I painted Samuel Smith. If you've not checked that out, there'll be a link in the description below. And I've painted, um, thanks for letting me know that, by the way, all the subscribers that ch chirped up and let me know that he's got a diamond plated and steel plated base. So I painted that very sci-fi. And here is Arthur completely finished. Taking a little picture to try and show the detail. Sometimes I think the spin doesn't quite show the subtleties of the colors. So I've gone for a picture just to show you that. I'll give you a spin as well, but I just wanted to show that that, that point I'm making where this pop models, model model's a little bit less poppy, a bit more subtly painted and carefully highlight. It took me an hour and nine minutes, pretty fast. I Thing. He's quite difficult and small, but I used magnifying glasses to do his eyes. Didn't paint that on camera. There's no way I could do that. And I just used my insane detail brush for so much of this model and it wasn't too hard. It just was slow, slow and steady. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Let me know if you'd like to see some more. And if you're new to the channel, do hit subscribe, do hit like, do all those things. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.